Hi, I'm uh, Dotan Schachter, and this is the uh, questionnaire with uh, DJ Amaya. Um, so, uh, what are you uh, doing these days? Um, remixing uh, a lot of uh, K-pop and J-pop. Um, working on a lot of uh, commission remixes too. Um, I get hired out to do remixes from time to time, and I do those as well. So those kind of usually uh, take priority, but uh, that's pretty much what's keeping me busy is doing remixing. Mm -hmm. um, convention season is coming up, so I do a lot of DJing and uh, a lot of the larger anime conventions. Uh, like I, D I DJ Anime Expo, Anime Central, uh, Animazement, those are the three big ones. I'm also doing Otaku Rehab, too, which is a smaller one. It's going to be coming up here uh, next month. And that, that has me going everywhere from Chicago to North Carolina to back here in L.A. Uh, also uh, working on the, uh, on the album, third album? Oh, yeah, yeah. Working on the, my original stuff, yeah. yeah. Angel of Dawn is, is almost done. It's something that I've really been putting, putting a lot of time into. It's, there's a reason why I don't release my uh, a personal um, original music album very often is because I usually tend to put a lot of time and effort that I don't usually um, put into my remixes. There's just it's something I it takes a lot for me to put a stamp of approval on my stuff. So yeah. it's that's the reason it takes. Sort of a lot. perfectionist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's I there's a lot of people in my head that I'm trying to compete with, and I try to think, hey, is is this is this gonna? Is this got that same kind of thing where it's that impressive? Because sometimes I'll hear a CD and I'll just be like, "Man, that's so awesome! I, I gotta go back to the drawing board because it's I gotta kick more ass than that somehow." Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, what uh, what turns you on creatively? <sighs> turns me on creatively. Um, usually inspires me is if I hear some really good music like uh, something new from like one of my favorite producers usually if I hear something like that kind of gives me a com I have a little competitive spirit in me to kind of go in there and try to do something that 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 to, that's better than that and it doesn't always I wouldn't say that it's always like that but that's what kind of inspires me to, to kind of kick me in the butt to do things um, that and also um, just life in general like uh, you know as life happens, you know, I, I get inspired by, uh, like, some of the parties I go to or things like that or the events I've been at, and I come away from that thinking, you know, well, the crowd really reacted to this kind of thing, and in my head, I, when I'm making a track, I'm usually in picturing how it's playing out when I play it live. Oh, ah, okay. Okay. Uh, if, you were, if you were a mind reader, whose mind would you like to read? Who's mine would I like to read? Um, I would probably have to say um, BT. Ah, huh. yeah. yeah. Nice, uh, good good album you came out with, uh, Whole Full Machines. Oh, yeah. That, that's one of those ones that sent me back to the drawing board. Yeah. He's, 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 a, he's amazing. And uh, when it, it's just everything that he does, it's so intricate and so masterfully done. And uh, it's just nothing quick and easy about any of his stuff. So it's like when I heard, it's like his last CD, the, um... He's um, the Machines? No, 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 the, the one before that. Uh, the one before forgot. that. Um, and that one I listen to a lot, and it's very ambient. Mm -hmm. um, it's the, uh, This Binary Universe. Oh, that, that was yeah. the one before. And it's very ambient, it's very experimental, and... It's something when I listen to it, I listen to it with a producer's ear, and I, I kind of hear all the little clicks and little blips and little sounds and samples and, yeah. and sound manipulation. And it's just yeah, everything that went into it. Into the uh, yeah, yeah, he's he's a mad scientist, and I would love to get inside his head. <laughs> um, if uh, if you could travel in time, uh, which era would you like to visit? Um, probably the eighties. Okay. Um, I, 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 would, I would say the 70s, but I would say I'd, I'd probably like the 80s a little more. Because, like, I, I grew up in the 80s, but I was a little young to really enjoy it fully. Um, so I think that to kind of retroactively go and uh, relive that would be kind of an interesting period, especially... See as an, an adult, like, to see that. Yeah, yeah, because there was a lot of stuff that really started around that, especially with uh, dance music. Mm -hmm. That really kind of came to a head, and there was a lot of stuff that I kind of missed out on. Yeah, oh, the synth sound, synth. Yeah, 
a lot of the early acid house scene, things like that, the early rave scene before you know before it kind of died out. Um, I kind of when I started getting into dance music, I was kind of riding the wave of the late '90s scene that was mm -hmm. amazing, but it would just kind of came to a point where it died because it, it's oversaturated the market. Yeah. Um, so I kind of wish I could kind of relive all that stuff, like as like. Uh, 80s, you know, definitely, you know, if, and leading into the, like, the late 80s, early 90s, it's just like, there's some stuff in there where it was just so much going on, so much technology revolutionizing everything where it was all new. Yeah. Now it's just tools that are available to you. Okay. Um, what's, uh, what's your favorite sound? What's my favorite sound? Yeah. Um, I, you know, I'd probably say it would be a toss-up between uh, the TB-303 bass line and the TR-909 uh, kick drum. That'd probably be my favorite sounds. They like those two together. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's head-to-head because that 909 kick is, is probably, you know, you know what, I take that back. My favorite kicks, my favorite sound in the whole wide world is Paul Van Dyke's bass drum. That's my favorite sound. And the winner. I, I, <laughs> Yes, that's the winner. I, I, it's like I take it all back. PVD's kick drum is something that's always just, ah, just it's it's like a stake to me. It's just every time I, I hear I hear one of his productions, I hear his kick drum and how it's everything from how it's produced, how it's mastered in the mix. It's just like so insane that it just changes everything. Even with just one one percussion element, can yeah. completely change the way that that it's all felt. And that's something I've always tried to strive for. My like a lot of times, like my kick drum will be so you know high up or so big. It's because I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to do something to that effect, and it's it's really kind of impossible to do it the way he does it. And uh, that that's my favorite sound. Cool. Um, what uh, what album or song influences you the most? I'd probably say um, nowadays. Probably be what would probably be influence me the most would probably be Paul Van Dyke's um, "Out There and Back." Hmm. Uh, song in particular, in particular, would probably be "Another Way." Hmm. Um, that that would probably be influence me the most. Um, recently, you know, it might be different, but as far as overall, especially with the majority of my work over the last however many years. It, that was the big ch game changer for me when I went into dance music. Is I heard "Tell Me Why" and then another way. Another way was just I, I heard it was like this. This is it. This is yeah. perfect, and it's it's still amazing to this day. There's nothing that I would ever change about. I still I still I still play the record. I, I have the record right over there, and it's, I still whip it out occasionally, and it's just amazing. Uh, like newer stuff, it might be you know something like Yasutaka Nakata or Shinichi Osawa, but at the same time. Um, I, if I had to pick one, it'd be another way. Yeah. Uh, well, this might go back to the uh, mind reading, but uh, who would you like to yeah. uh, collaborate with, and uh, why? Who would I like to collaborate with? Hmm. So many to choose from. You know, um, I would I would love to collaborate. So many. Oh, um, I, I think the ultimate the ultimate one. You know, I'd love to collaborate with Kylie Minogue. Oh, okay. That, 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 would, that, would, be, that would be my pick. I mean, she, she's awesome. And I, and I know that just uh, I think it would be a nice, interesting uh, pairing to try to produce something with her. Because I, I, I would definitely nasty it up a little bit. She's already got excellent producers she works with, but yeah. she could use a little nastier, nastier electro sound. A little kick to the... Uh... Yeah, a little, little, little balls, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, what uh, What drives you crazy? What drives me crazy? In a good way or a bad way? Um, let's say a bad way. <laughs> In a bad way. Drives me crazy. Um, <laughs> does, it have to, does that have to be a music thing? No, no, whatever. Anything like... Oh, okay, okay. Here, here, here's what drives me crazy. And it's people who use their cell phone as a boombox. <laughs> it's the the speakers aren't. Yes. Designed it, for it's like we know. Okay, I, I I know some people might say, "Oh, I don't have my headphones with me." It sounds like crap. 
Yeah. It's not doing the music any justice. And 